Good morning, everybody. My name is Raya, and today I'm going to be teaching you all about mushrooms. So bear with me, because this can be a very complicated subject, but hopefully I can simple things down and make it really easy to understand. At some point in time, a fungus released its spores onto this wood. These spores eventually grew hypha, which is a thin hair-like tube. Each hypha secretes an enzyme that breaks down the chosen food source, which in this case is the wood. Eventually, these hypha will form a crisscross mat, which is what we call mycelium. So I've got some mycelium here to show you guys. And this mycelium is using this tree as food. It's decomposing it to hopefully in the future form some sort of fruit body. Now, I don't really know what type of fruit body this is gonna form, whether it's a boli or a gilled mushroom or a polypore. You know, you, you can't really tell just by looking at it. So whatever this mushroom may form into in the future, it will most likely be mycorrhizal, which means it will have a mutually beneficial relationship with a tree or a plant. So I've actually found a mushroom. This is the same mushroom that I've been finding over the past two days since we've had rain. And I'm guessing this is one of the first ones that you find during spring. I think it's called a spring field cap. Now let's talk about the structure of a mushroom. So to the left, you can see the hypha strand, which helps in mushroom development. Next, we have the gills, which is the fertile spore producing part of the mushroom located under the cap. Not all mushrooms have gills though. I'll cover this later. Now we are moving down the stem, which is the axis supporting the mushroom's cap. This mushroom is clearly different from a gilled mushroom because it has pores. Each one of these holes are actually the ends of a series of tubes within the mushroom cap. One of the most important things to know while mushroom hunting is what's underneath the cap. If a mushroom has gills, it's called a gilled mushroom. If a mushroom has pores, it's called a polypore, meaning multiple holes. Next, if you pick up a mushroom and it looks like it has a sponge underneath, that's called a bolete. If the fungi has teeth, it's called a toothed mushroom. A mushroom has crowded gills if they are very close together. If the gills are far apart, it's called distant. Gilled mushrooms can come in many different shapes, sizes, and colors. This can make mushroom identification very complex. Luckily, every mushroom releases spores, and from these spores, you can actually take a spore print. In order to take a spore print, you cut the stem off of the cap and place the cap on a piece of aluminum foil. Next, cover the mushroom cap with a bowl and wait 24 hours. Waiting a full day should give the mushroom time to release its spores. Once you lift up the bowl, you will see the color of the spores. It can be brown, purple, black, white, any color. The gill color does not determine the spore color. This is the yellow unicorn mushroom, and it has yellow gills, but its spore print is pink. It is very important to know the true color of the spore because this mushroom may have a look like that has a brown spore and you wouldn't know unless you took that spore print. Next, let's talk about bolletes. The underside of this fungi looks a lot like a sponge, but these sponges are actually tiny pores that go all throughout this cap. The bolete and the polypore both share the porous underbelly. But unlike the polypore, the tube layer of a bolete is typically easy to peel away from the flesh of the cap. It's almost like a mushroom pancake. So now that we've talked about the formation and the structure of a mushroom, let's talk about the more complex subject, mushroom hunting. So there are people out there who will tell you you need all sorts of equipment to be a good mushroom hunter. But that's simply not true. All you need is a good eye, and if you don't have that, maybe some glasses. But I will say some uh, equipment does aid in the identification and collection of mushrooms. For example, this right here 
The sole reason I carry this around is just because it makes me look cool. Just kidding. That's not why. Um, it, it actually helps me in identifying and figuring out what type of musher I'm looking for. I suggest you buy a field guide that is specific for your area. For me, it's the Carolinas. So just to show you how vast a mushroom's formation can be, I want you to think about that gilled mushroom I showed you earlier in this video, and then look at this one. This is called the Devil's Urn. It's a cup fungi. Cup fungi are pretty cool because they don't have any gills, tubes, pores, or teeth. Their spores are actually produced on the top surface of the cup. This is the wood ear, which is grouped as a jelly fungus. So the jelly fungi sound exactly like they look. Like jelly. This grouping of species is based primarily on its gelatinous or rubbery consistency, rather than its genetic relationship. Almost all jelly fungi grow on wood. So the next thing every mushroom hunter should know are the environmental factors that cause a mushroom to grow. Today we're only going to be talking about two, which is the climate and the type of trees or forest that the mushroom is surrounded by. Fungi are not plants. This is why they must rely on outside sources to obtain food. Because of this, certain fungi form beneficial mycorrhizal relationships with plants. These plants are often trees. A fungus gives the tree extra water and minerals it needs to survive. In return, the fungus receives plant sugar. This is the black locust polypore, which is known to only grow on locust trees. Because this mushroom only grows on this tree, it's important to know how to identify this tree. It's the same for other mushrooms. 